Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their upcoming April of 2018 Premier Auction. And what we have here today is an Armalite AR-10B. Now, this was manufactured in the late 1990s, in this particular case, by the Armalite... well, by a company that owned the Armalite trademark. Uh, Armalite itself, of course, originally manufactured AR-10s in the 1950s and 60s, and then the company ended up kind of petering out by, well, by the late 1960s, really. Um, they sold the rights to the AR-15 to Colt just a little too early, before it became clear that the Army was going to buy a tremendous number of them. They then set about developing... well, of course, they had the AR-10, which failed to make any real substantial progress in uh, NATO arms trials. They then had... they designed the AR-18 as a replacement for the AR-15. They no longer had the rights to use uh, Stoner's gas system patent, because that had been sold to Colt. So they came up with a new design, um, the AR-18, failed to really take off in any major military sense, and so the company kind of limped along selling AR-180s, the semi-auto AR-18, and then finally in, I believe, the early 70s, it was sold to a Philippine company um, and didn't do a whole lot there. They had, I think, plans to continue manufacturing AR-180s, but didn't. The company basically fizzled. Um, however, it, it, the trademark, at least, made a comeback in the 1990s. In 1995 or 1994, uh, it was purchased from this Philippine company that still owned it uh, by a guy named Mark Westrom, who was at the time the owner of Eagle Arms. Eagle Arms had been uh, like the retail arm, I believe, of LMT. Uh, they'd been doing military work, and so they kind of divested themselves of their, of their commercial uh, rifle sales. And uh, Eagle Arms had been producing... had started producing AR-15 rifles for the civilian commercial market. And then Westrom, owning Eagle Arms, decided to buy Armalite. And he was really interested... I should say, buy the Armalite, basically the name and the trademarks, because there wasn't a whole lot else to it at that time. Certainly there weren't any substantial stocks of actual original AR-10 parts or guns that were included as part of that purchase. Uh, Westrom wanted... basically wanted to reintroduce a 308 version of the AR. And at that point, there was really only one other company doing it, and that was Knight's Armament with their SR-25. Now, the SR-25 was developed as a precision rifle specifically for the military. It was expensive, and there wasn't really a, a good mass-market civilian option for a 308 AR at that time, and that's what Westrom wanted to do. So he got together actually with some original Armalite engineers, and they developed this... this, right here, uh, as the AR-10B. Now, the B is there because there was an originally an AR-10A. It was a very short-lived plan uh, for a civilian 308 semi-auto AR that never went anywhere. Uh, it was basically an AR-10 with a few of, what, uh, of the elements that had since been developed for the AR-15. Uh, so because there had been that A model, Westrom and, uh, Arm and the new Armalite decided to name theirs the AR-10B, just continuing the pattern. There's no forward uh, assist on this one. However, that is because there were a couple different versions of this rifle that Armalite produced. This is basically the retro version, meant to uh, mimic a Sudanese pattern original AR-10, in particular with the brown furniture. This is plastic. It would have... on the Sudanese guns it was Bakelite. Um, but that and the very iconic trigger-style um, top-mounted charging handle. Now, Armalite also sold versions of this rifle with uh, an AR-15-style rear charging handle. Uh, they sold versions that had Picatinny rails uh, on top as well. Um, they had the A2... they had an A2 and an A4 pattern, they called them. So, there are a couple... you know, for someone who wanted a a retro... you know, I want an original AR-10, but of course I can't get those because they're all machine guns, they're very difficult to get, they're expensive, etc. This was, a, at the time, the only good option. Um, it's not quite a perfect copy. There are a lot of features of this that aren't quite exactly the same as the original AR-10, uh, but it's pretty darn close. It was certainly a lot closer than anything else that was available at the time. 
So one of the biggest differences is the magazine. So let's take a closer look and I'll explain why the magazine is different on these rifles. This rifle was introduced in 1996, and that's two years after the uh, passage of the original American assault weapons ban. And one of the uh, one of the effects of that ban was to prohibit the manufacture of magazines that could hold more than 10 rounds. Well, Armalite, of course, wanted to be able to use 20 round magazines for the AR-10, or rather they wanted their customers to be able to. That's, that gives you the appropriate look. That is the magazine that this rifle was designed for. So in order, in choosing a magazine, they of course could have gone with the original waffle pattern aluminum AR-10 mags. These were a bit rare. Um, they could have done something like stoner SR-25 magazines, but those were also not in large supply, and of course no one was able to make new ones. The question is what magazine could they use that was readily available in large numbers without having to be manufactured new? And the answer they came up with was the M14 magazine. So the FAL magazine is another potential choice. Uh, just the, the design of the feed lips on the FAL magazine with the trunnion of the AR-15 made it not a great choice. I suspect there was a similar issue with the HK G3 magazines. Um, in addition, the G3 had no setup for a magazine hold open. The M14 magazine works, it was pretty close, um, and it turned out to be, in Armalite's view, the best option. So they did some modifications to M14 magazines, namely they cut a notch in them here, and that's to work with the magazine release. You'll notice, of course, the original AR-10 and all AR-15 magazines have a cutout on the side. That's where the magazine is held in place. And then they also added this. That is a little spring-loaded plunger to activate the magazine hold open. Now on the M14, the follower itself does that, but just because of the geometry of the AR-15 or AR-10 receivers, they needed to extend something back. So Armalite added that tab and they cut this hole in the side of the magazines. Because these magazines were all already manufactured, they could be legally modified uh, during the assault weapons ban without any problems. So of course they shipped magazines with the rifles, and then you also could send your own M14 magazines to Armalite, and they would make these modifications to them um, for some minor fee and send them back to you. So the reason that these magazines were chosen was because at that time this was the most available, the, basically the best overall magazine option um, that they could come up with. Now, since then, the assault weapons ban expired, and of course ma uh, manufacture of new magazines is totally legal now, and Magpul has come out with uh, 20 round and other size uh, magazines that are more, that are really to the pattern of the original waffle mags. So today, people often look at these and go, why did they have, you know, this is such a stupid idea, why would you even do this? Uh, Magpul mags are the obvious answer. Well, they're the obvious answer today, but this was the best answer 20 years ago. A couple other features to point out here. This has some AR-15 style improvements to it. Uh, the lower receiver has all of the raised sections like an AR-15. It has a little bit of an angle to it. Um, Armalite has actually in more recent years introduced what they call the AR-10A. Um, they've started ignoring the fact that there already was an AR-10A. Um, and their new AR-10A does use uh, Magpul pattern magazines, and that has a little bit more of an angle to the magazine well there, at any rate. Um, this also has a case deflector on it. You can see that the back here is clearly set up to have an AR-15 style charging handle. It's just that on the retro model, it has this trigger handle instead operates like that. Um, on this one, the charging handle does come all the way back along the stock, and then it has a little detent to keep it in place. It is a non-reciprocating handle. Um, I don't have a good way to pull it back without using the handle to show you, but it's a non-reciprocating handle in there. The controls on the left side are very much like a standard AR-15. Selector switch is the same, uh, bolt release is basically the same. The furniture is this cool brown plastic, uh, modeled to look like the original brown Bakelite. Um, you know, there are some elements on this rifle that aren't a perfect replica, of course. Things like the front sight block here is identical to an AR-15 style front sight block instead of the original AR-10s. This has a relatively heavy barrel on it, which is, it looks the same as an original AR-10. What's interesting is some of the early AR-10 contracts 
Uh, they look like this, but they actually had a lightweight fluted barrel underneath a solid barrel shroud right at the very front. Uh, and that was done to allow fit of grenade launch, uh, rifle grenades. So the look's right, but the balance isn't quite. And then, of course, they Armalite opted to put on uh, this big four-port muzzle brake, which makes sense. Um, nothing wrong with that for a shooter. Isn't quite the same pattern as the original AR-10s, though. And, of course, this has AR-15-style sights. Uh, you'll notice that someone has put on a hooded national match pattern uh, rear peep on this guy. If we take a look at the internals, you can see that this is obviously an AR pattern bolt. Uh, this is the the AR-10B, the new retro AR, and this is an original Sudanese contract uh, Armalite AR-10 bolt and carrier. And you can obviously see some differences here. The gas key is substantially different in form. Um, the bolt carrier itself is a little bit larger in diameter on the Sudanese gun than it is on the AR-10B. The bolt heads, however, are pretty much the same. They both have nice big pattern uh, locking lugs on them. Some of the earlier original AR-10s actually had a smaller locking lug. And then, of course, cutouts on the original bolt, on the underside as well. Uh, none of these parts are directly interchangeable with each other. Well, with Brownells having recently introduced their retro AR-10, I thought it'd be pretty cool to look, take a look at this, the Armalite version of the retro AR-10. Uh, as far as I can tell, these are not still in production. They are out there and available. Um, and, of course, this one is available. So, uh, been a couple little changes made to this one. Someone has put on a national match style of rear sight, and it has a really nice trigger in it. It feels to me like someone has uh, improved the trigger over what was probably factory stock on this rifle. So, if you've been thinking about getting a retro AR-10 and you prefer this pattern, well, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this rifle. That has all of their pictures, their description, their price estimate, and everything else you would need to know to place a bid on it right through their website. Thanks for watching.